Netflix is facing backlash for the release of the latest stand-up special, The Closer, starring Dave Chappelle. But the backlash this time coming from within the company itself. Workers in Los Angeles staging a walkout protest against the comedic giant demanding a recall of that special and that the streaming company hire more trans executives. Now this on the heels of weeks of controversy from the public, many calling for a cancellation of what fans call the goat of comedy, Dave Chappelle himself. So here to weigh in, a comedian, Kayvon, he's here. Thank you for joining us, Kayvon. First off, can we really cancel Dave Chappelle? Uh, well, I'm glad you picked me to talk on this. I'm one of the foremost authorities on cancel culture. I should start off by saying I'm the most famous half Persian comedian in the world. So before you cancel me, you have to understand my dad is a Muslim immigrant from Iran, and we believe in America and freedom of speech. Comedy is a very American institution, and Dave Chappelle has made people laugh for 30 years. So to try to cancel him today, I think it's a bad idea. Is, is the comedy world exactly split over this controversy? Because some of Dave's most famous friends, like Jon Stewart, uh, Joe Rogan, I mean, they, they seem to almost be on the opposite spectrums of the political uh, world anyway. If Dave is transphobic, would that make them guilty by association? Well, any real comedian has to be on the side of freedom of speech and freedom to make jokes. The real story here is Dave in that special made fun of white people, Asian people, gay people, uh, Mike Pence, even himself, but no one wants to talk about any of those things. Right now there's one group taking all the oxygen out of the room, and if you want to be equal, then you have to be open to being joked about too. Absolutely, I'm with you on that. I mean, he, he points out, he reminds the crowd um, that his wife is Asian. He has black and Asian children, um, which he jokes about all the time. Uh, but more broadly, I mean, you're out there, you're, you take the stage and, and, and you take the heat from people uh, live. Look at our society oh, yeah. right now. Have we just lost the ability to laugh? That is a huge concern because if you start attacking the comedians, that is the last bastion of freedom of speech. The reason uh, the United States has been so great is because we can critique our leaders. You can't do that in the Islamic Republic of Iran. We can critique rich people and poor people. Now, this is not unique to me because I was one of the most popular touring comedians on the college circuit, and I was running into this four or five years ago. You might call Dave brave, but at the end of the day, he's a legend, he's a multimillionaire, and if you cancel him, he goes back to his mansion. I was getting yelled at for my little jokes on the college tour and went back to sleep on somebody's couch. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought up the whole college uh, campus thing because we've seen people um, that were not only comedians, big, big names like Jerry Seinfeld um, that refused to go to college campuses. You have speakers who are not comedians, but uh, speakers like uh, Ben Shapiro, who have literally had right. had threats on his life because he's going to go speak about, you know, uh, conservative forums and, and what have you. Uh, in, in the way of, of college campuses, why are colleges bending to the will of a handful of angry kids. I believe it starts with getting into college. You have to write that personal statement. And it started with, I really want to be a doctor. Then it started with, I would be the first Latina American in my family to be a doctor. And now the stories are getting more and more based in victimhood. Once you bring a bunch of victims to college, now they're in the victim Olympics trying to outdo each other. And so every small little group thinks they need to control the narrative. Victimhood is not just a shield anymore to be like, hey, I need to be protected. It's become a sword to attack people with. Comedy demands freedom of speech. And if we don't release the pressure in a fun Netflix special with seven cameras shooting it, people will hold these views and have no outlet and then things are gonna get a lot worse. So I would encourage the LGBTQ community, which by the way, did you know it's been changed now? If you say that, that's rude. It's LGBTQI2A plus community. If you get it wrong, they might attack you. They need to come to the table be part of the fun and not be considered off limits. I've only seen this in one other area and sadly that's radical Islam. Yeah, I would agree. While we were in the midst of all this Asian hate, I mean, hello, I'm Asian, I'm part of that community. But when I when I watch say Joe Coy joke about his half Asianness, 
I laugh and that's right. okay. When he makes fun of his mom's accent and, and noodles and stir fry, that's funny. That is okay. Um, but you know, in, in terms of right. uh, in terms of free speech, um, comedy, as you said, is an art form. It, it's protected speech in the eyes of the law. But it it isn't obviously without consequence. If Netflix or nowadays even YouTube, for that matter, if they began censoring comedians for controversial jokes, what sort of precedent do you think that sets? Well, that's what they're trying to do. If you can get rid of the comedian, see, already at work, you can't make any of these jokes. And you can't do it in the newspaper. You can't do it on TV. So comedy clubs was the last place. And that is why it's such an important piece on the chessboard. They want to get rid of it. And what offends someone is not the comedian's business. A comedian writes jokes, they go out there, and they want to make most people laugh. The only vote we need is a laugh. If every night it gets a boo, the comedian will self-correct and take that out. The problem that this community has is that most people are laughing at these jokes. Now, they laughed at the black jokes, they laughed at the Asian jokes, and then it got to them and suddenly it's off limits. But they have to understand this is what's going to happen with comedy. And that's where we need people like you to push back. Buy a ticket to your favorite comedy club in your local community because colleges have told me it's not worth the trouble anymore. We don't want the 14 protesters outside, so we will now not have a show for the 500 students that were ready to come laugh. A small right. minority taking away laughter from the majority. Right. Would you call that tyranny of the few? I think so. I think being a minority got so much power to it that we're forgetting there is a majority out there as well. And also the complaints are getting more and more technical. You know, all these different letters that have been added, you expect a 50-year-old African-American comedian to be on board the day you come up with this theory? I mean, uh, I got yelled at once because a girl said, you didn't say, I said, where's all the LGBTQs? Nice to meet you. She goes, I'm pansexual. And I, I said, so she goes, you left me out. I go, well, I'm into deep dish, okay? <laughs> Some people like thin crust. We all have to get along. Everyone's got their thing. <laughs> no, no, I gotta ask, is there, a, is there a fine line between joking and hate speech? Well, of course there's a fine line between joking and hate speech. But if you really think Dave Chappelle is doing hate speech, then you have the problem. You know, people, we, we, we know some people can't sing, correct? <laughs> That's not, no big deal. And we know some, some people can't dance. I'm one of them. You don't want to see my TikTok, all right? But some people don't have a sense of humor. And if you tell them that, they get very defensive. But you're going to have to accept it. Maybe it's you. Uh, that is a great point. I could talk to you for a lot longer about this. Unfortunately, <laughs> I got to leave that there. So please do come back and chat with us some more. Uh, comedian Kayvon, thank you. Check out his stuff. It's all over the internet. Good stuff there. I'm going to give one free ticket to every single one of your viewers that finds me on my website and finds a tour date near them. Very good. Listen up, guys. Yep. Kayvon, Let's thank you so much. <laughs> See you at the shows.